right. Okay, so um, in our last video, we made the top for our uh, casket. And I've gone ahead and painted the inside with a little bit of my um, antique bronze paint, deco art. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. And I want to talk to you about the base. Now, we had certain measurements for the top. And it almost looks like the base is bigger, but it is and it isn't. The sides are bigger, but the inside of the coffin is smaller and you have to make it just a little bit smaller so that it this lid will slip on top of it so we're gonna we're gonna work on that i will give you the measurements it's um it's not hard it's just you have to be a little bit detail oriented to do it okay so i'm gonna put this aside and i have to get a piece of paper i'll be right back Okay, I'm really good. I always have black paper by my side because I use a lot of black paper. I go through a lot of black paper. White paper is usually out by my printer because that's what I print on. So this is cardstock. It's 80 pound cardstock. You will need that. You will need a base color and you can use black. You can use the same that you've used on the top if you like, but I'm going to go ahead and use the brown. You can kind of see how pretty that looks together. So I have those. You're going to need your rulers. I have both of my rulers. A pencil you don't need a pen um, use your bone folder your eraser your distress inks some glue if you want to paint the inside you will need whatever you're going to paint some people like the black I like the black but I'm going to use the antique bronze for today um, I have my paintbrush for my paint and I have my spatula okay oh and I also have a couple clips because sometimes like we talked about this side doesn't hold as well until we get some of the other sides in it seems like it pulls so I'm going to keep those aside and we will use those now we are making the base so let me show you my pattern for just the base push these up here out of my way a little bit so when you remember we made the top this first line was 18 centimeters exact this time because we want it to be just a little bit smaller i'm going to make it 17 and a half centimeters so that's the first thing we're going to do i'm going to put my ruler about in the middle and then my ends are here now with our 18 if you remember we started at the five and we ended at the 23 so since we're going to make this a half of a centimeter shorter, I'm going to go to 22 and a half and I'm going to make my tick mark and then I'm going to draw my line between those two. So this is going to be 17 and a half. So there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and a half. Perfect. Okay. And then the other ones are also going to be smaller. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make my straight lines I have to turn it so you can see I'm so sorry if that messes with you all I line one of my lines up with that line and then I draw a line now this middle line that we put six centimeters down we're going to do the same thing we're going to put it six centimeters down this does not change just the outside dimensions are going to change so I'm going to go ahead and put my ruler at the top. I'm going to put a tick at six centimeters. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and line up one of my crosshair lines and draw another line. Okay. So we know that we had six centimeters for each of these, this one and this one. And the closest I could get um, was to use an inch because when you look at six centimeters it is one two and three eighths so I moved that down to two and a quarter inches and that will take off an eighth of an inch 
So you'll want to use your, um, your inch ruler for this one. And I'm going to go ahead, I guess I'm going to go ahead and use this. It's not a big deal. So I want to have two and a quarter, which means that I have an inch. Can you see that? I have an inch and an eighth on each side of my line, which there's an inch and an eighth, an inch and an eighth. So those are my tick marks. And I'm going to do that on the bottom also. It's going to be, I'm going to put my ruler on. And you can see I have it on the three, but don't worry about that. I count out an inch and an eighth and an inch and an eighth. So those are my tick marks. Now the second one, that, or the next one that I want to do is the middle. Now we did come down six centimeters, which is okay. This one we want to change to three and three quarter inches because nine and a half centimeters, um, you can do it if you want to. Um, it's just, centimeters are a lot harder to get in the middle of a half like between six and six and a half it's a lot harder to find so for me i just changed it to three and three quarters which means i will have my math will be one and a half plus an eighth one and a half plus an eighth so that should be three and three quarters inch. No, nope, that's only three and a quarter. What did I do wrong? Okay, I have to erase those, sorry. Um, oh, I got what I did. Okay, okay, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need one and a half plus three. One, two, three. There we go. One and a half plus three. So that's actually an inch and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths. So let's let's measure it, see, just to make sure. Yeah, that's one and th or three and three quarters. That's perfect. Okay, so it's gonna be that one. Okay, I'm good. So then the next thing we want to do, just like yes, the, just like our last video, is we want to go ahead and connect these. And I want to make sure and connect the right dot since I have two dots sitting there. There's one. Let's do this one. And that's another little trick I've learned. If you put your pencil down on one of your dots, Rather than trying to get it like this, get this one, because by the time you get this one straight, this one's usually off. So I put my pencil as kind of an anchor, put my, my ruler up against it, and then just swivel the bottom until it comes into line. Okay, and then I'm going to do it on this side also. You have less chance of everything flopping around, flipping around. Now... The next thing we want to do is, uh, this is only an inch wide, so it's not going to work. So what I need to do is I need to make an inch and a half. We're going to make the bottom part deeper than this. This is only an inch. So we want the bottom part to be a half an inch bigger so that we can see the bottom part. So we're going to make it an inch and a half. I'm going to set my mute ruler on this line at one and a half inches, I'll make my mark. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect those. I should have started with a smaller line. So let's do a smaller line, just so we can make sure we intersect. Um, my ruler's not big enough to keep the intersections good, so I have to adjust. So I'm going to put it on a half, one and a half inches on this line, make my mark, pull it down here, make my mark, and then connect those. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the ends. 
I'm going to put my ruler on the one and a half mark on this line and I will bring it over here and do the same and then I will connect these I might have to elongate that okay so I will do one and a half here one and a half down here and then I'm going to connect those and the same with this I'm going to do the bottom one first because then I'll know how long to make my my last one so we do that we come over here we do this and then we connect them And you can see this is not long enough, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make it longer. Okay. So we're gonna do the last side, and I'm gonna make my little tick at one and a half, my little tick at one and a half. Then I'm gonna go ahead and and you can use a longer ruler if you like. I just like to be able to see what's underneath. I don't make anything hidden. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be our cut work. We're going to cut out entirely around this. But before we do that, I want us to go ahead and make our, our tabs that we're going to use to glue up the top. And it's basically the same as we did the last time. We're going to lay our ruler. I'm going to start with this line. I'm going to lay my ruler and I'm going to line up one of the lines on my ruler with that line and I want to make oh sorry that's the wrong one let's let's do this one actually let's do the top and the bottom first because then I can I can think what I'm doing just a little bit better so I'm going to line this up on here on my top line and I'm right at the corner and I'll draw my line and then I will do the same thing on this side okay so this is going to be my tab and in order to make it remember we talked about we have to do it differently at the top so that this doesn't get folded in this way so that it doesn't go like this otherwise it won't fit so in order to do that we're going to use all of these lines to put our tabs and so since I've gotten the top I know that this one is going to be a score line so I'm going to put my ruler line on this line and I'm going to go ahead and do some hashes this will tell me that this does not get cut that does not get cut this gets cut and this is the tab okay let's do it on the other side we want to go ahead and line up one of these lines on my ruler with the line on my paper and then I want to tab it score it like that okay so this is a tab tab let's do the bottom if I do the bottoms and the tops then I I can kind of keep things straight in my head okay so again we want to put on this bottom line not the very last one but the bottom of the inside line here we want to put our ruler as close to our corner and yet lined up and then we want to draw our line and we're going to do the same thing on this side and so this is going to be a tab and I want to use this line to line up this tab for the score marks. So I get this line lined up on that long line and then I'm just going to make my dashed lines. This tells me again that this gets scored. That does not get cut. And we'll do the same on this side. I'm going to line up my ruler on this line as close to the corner as I can this corner and there's my tab 
Okay, so the last one we want to do is the middle one. And uh, I know in my mind I have to think very logically or I get very confused. Okay, so we're working on this shorter line. I want to line up my line on my ruler with that line and then I'm going to draw straight. And then I'm going to line up the line on my ruler with the longer line and that will be dashed. And again, we'll do the same thing on this side. I will line up my ruler with that short line and that's a straight line. Line up my ruler with the longer line and this is a dashed line. Okay, that looks good. That looks really good. Now, you are welcome, if you want to, um, just glue these two pieces together and cut once if you wish. I don't have a problem with that. I have done that before and it works very well and I'm going to do that now just to show you. So, basically what you would have to do is you would then have to put your lines on up. Whereas when we did this one, actually I'm not going to show you, but I am, I am going to explain it to you. If you glue these two pieces together, you have to glue the white side to the colored side because if you glue this side, then you don't have your lines to cut. Whereas with this one, you can see we cut this out first and then we were able to just glue our lines down to our colored paper so that they don't show through on this side. So let's do that again. It's just, it makes it a little night neater. You are welcome to do it the other way. I don't have a problem with people looking at my videos and then doing things their own way. Um, the, the, the basic directions are nice to follow, but then if you find an easier way to do something, please go at it, have at it. I know when we were in school, we just had to do everything exactly as we were told. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't teach us to think in school. I was a teacher, so I kind of noticed they don't teach children to think most of the time. They want them to just follow rote, to do what they're told. And for creative students, that is very hard. If you're a creative person, sometimes it's very hard to walk to the same drummer. Okay, so you can see we have it just like this. Now, we want to go ahead and score these and cut some of these. So let's go ahead and start our scoring first. I'm going to move that up so I don't get cut. Where is mine? There. Okay, so I'm going to lay this corner against my cut line pretty close. And then I will take my knife. Yep, it fits pretty much right into a hole, which is perfect. And then I'm going to do this one. Now, you want to make sure that your line, when you're scoring, that you're not scoring on this side, the outside of your base. If it's inside just a little bit, that's okay. If it's right on the line, that's perfect. That's actually excellent. So you might have to move this around once you get your, your yeah, see, I want to move that just a little bit so that my line is a little further in. Oops. Because if, if we score this too far on this side of the line, it's going to be Remember, we only took an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch off. And so if you score it outside of this line, it's a good chance that it's going to be exactly the same size as this. So we want to make sure that when we score, see that one has to be moved just a little bit, that we're either exactly on the line or we're a little bit inside that line so that it's smaller than our original top. And I just make a little nick so that I can kind of check. Okay. Oh yeah, perfect. All right. 
So we have those. I'm going to go ahead and what we want to do is we want to cut these. And again, you'll watch me. I kind of make sure that the end of my scissors is lined up where I want my cut to stop. And that's a per personal preference. Then I don't go over and cut into where I don't want cut. And sometimes I have to adjust it. I've gotten pretty good at eyeballing. Now you're not cutting those. Those are going to be scored. Just your solid lines going in. Okay, that looks good. That looks great. Okay, so I'm going to put my scoreboard away and I'm just going to get my notebook because it's soft. Because these are hard to line up on my scoreboard, I'm going to use a ruler and my little knife here. And I'm going to lay that down. And then I'm going to score across that back and forth a few times. Okay. Perfect. Okay, each one of those I'm going to do. And if you don't have a scoreboard, you can do this with any of the scoring that you have to do. This, this will work. You just have to mark your things so that you know where you're scoring. And this will work. A, a fancy scoreboard is not necessary. For example, um, let me show you. I have, I have this cut board and it does have a scoring tool, but I don't like to use it because this is not very accurate. So I do use this to cut from time to time. And then if I don't, ha if I've gone on a trip and I've just taken this one because it's small, then I don't have a scoreboard. So I will just use my, my ruler. It's, it works just perfectly well. So we're going to do the bottom. I want to tell you girls, my husband, has worked so hard to get these video productions up for me because he has a, a master's degree in IT. He is, and he worked for the military. He did military computer programming also. So this, this has been a nightmare for me because I am, I like computers. I do software. I have a degree in software. And so I, you give me a piece of software within a day or so, I can I can I can tell you how to run it. I can teach you how to run it. But with him, it's the hardware. He does fabulous job with hardware. Um, you know, uh, making the computer run, knowing where to find things to fix things, getting my printer up. He always tells me that we have been out of the teaching profession for a few years, and so. He had resources when we were teaching at the college. He could always go down to one of our friends that, that that's all they did was worked. And they would tell him how to fix something or he would figure it out himself most of the time. But now he doesn't have the resources and computers change so much so quickly that it's hard to keep abreast unless you're just staying in the field and keeping up with everything as it changes because right now there's no way that he would be comfortable doing any of that anymore. Okay, but I am grateful for him. He has kept my situation running, and it's not fancy like some girls, but oh my goodness, I appreciate him so much. He is such a love. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to take my needle out, and I always try to remember to stick it in my shirt because I've lost enough needles. And I want you to remember that when you are placing this, you want to remember and keep the top and bottom are the are basically a big thing we want to have about a half an inch and so i actually am going to mark a half an inch on the bottom and again at the top i'm sorry i have to turn that so it's towards me at the top so that i know when i go to glue this to try and keep my lines 
and see there it goes just about perfect i want to make sure and keep these two lines this is a little easier because you have more room and we're only going to do a half an inch on each side so let's go ahead and put our glue on and i'm going to glue all of my outsides first including my tab outsides and a little bit careful with the outside and then the inside make sure you get some glue on everything but it doesn't have to be as good as your outside glue the outside is what's going to actually keep it on that brown paper for now so see how we've glued on the side that has our pencil marks so I'm going to go ahead and try and get this oh nice very nice very nice very nice okay take your bone folder make sure and get it burnished down really well especially on the edges and especially in here where we have our tabs and I didn't get that quite straight but that's okay I still have an inch on just about everything okay oh nice I'm going to put my pin back in my glue so it doesn't dry out this art glitter glue I, I want to warn you it does dry out a little faster than other glues so the next thing we want to do is we want to take our ruler and if you're using this just remember you have to make ticks and then connect them but with this I don't have to do that and I think maybe that's why I love it so much because it saves me a little bit of time okay so I'm going to put my half inch mark and that's pretty much where I'm at right there yeah not 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 much give is there and I'm going to do it on this side this side I'm a little short I'm not going to worry about it I do have about three eighths of an inch so I'm going to do a half an inch on this side oops oh, I'm getting caught on that edge <laughs> and then a half an inch on this side and I have to extend it okay so we're going to do a half an inch on this one and then a half an inch on this one and I have to extend it because my ruler is not long enough I do have some bigger rulers but this is just perfect on this little table of mine it just works great okay so let's go ahead and get busy cutting now if you just have a little sliver like that you might not want to cut that off I'm not going to it'll be fine and I'm going to cut this and I'm going to cut this this I don't have to and this now if you ever enlarge this casket which you can do by the way um, kind of keep in mind the sizes and then adjust them accordingly you might want to take two pieces of your paper and glue it together and then put your 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 paper down so the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put my ruler and I'm gonna start on a short side it's just easier I'm gonna put my ruler up against my white edge and then push this so that it goes over push this so yep yeah, there we go I'm going to do my other two short sides just love working with paper I think maybe because I'm a teacher I don't know even when I was in school as a kid myself paper was just magic I loved when school time the beginning of school came and I had to go and get a new notebook and new pencils and pens and oh I just thought that was fabulous and I'm still like that when I get I'm sure a lot of people a lot of us older ladies are we love it 
Okay, so there, we've gone ahead and, and folded all of our half inches. Now, we want to be sure you are cutting where you have the first cut line. And we're going to go ahead and cut in there and stop where we stopped the last time. This one's a little more fun. We're going to go ahead and cut in there and stop. But then we're also going to cut off the excess off of our tabs. Okay. And we're going to cut in here. And you just have to be a little bit careful. Sometimes I get a little sliver of something that I probably shouldn't have, but it doesn't hurt it. It does not hurt it at all. I'm going to cut off these and this. So there we have our tabs. I'm going to go ahead and cut this tab. This tab I don't worry too much about cutting the excess paper off. Oops, I don't want to go too far or I'll make a mistake. Okay, and then the bottom ones. I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to cut that little tail. So you can see we just have the tab right here. The rest of it is going to be about an inch. Don't go too far. I'll make a mistake. So on these end tabs, you have cut off the extra because otherwise it binds when you get ready to push it in here. Now this one I don't worry about because it's not actually, it, it, it doesn't hurt it. It's not a big deal. So let's clean this up. Okay. So the final thing we want to do before we start gluing is we want to go ahead, all of our sides that we went ahead and scored, I want to take all of that and make sure that I have a nice crisp fold to it. did this one. Nope, I didn't. So let's go ahead and do that one. Okay, looks good. Okay, so the first thing I want to do so that they have a chance to dry while I'm doing the others is I want to do these side ones. And that's when you're going to need this. Um, I did not push those down and that really helps if you push those down. Okay, there we go. So my glue, let me put my needle in my shirt. You don't know how many times I've called my husband, please come help me find my needle. So I've, I've kind of gotten onto the habit of putting it in my shirt. So I'm gonna fill that up. Now, what I do, since I have that, I will hold this one down and I will pull this other side over until it meets the edge. And then I will take my bone folder and burnish it down really well. And then I will put one of my paper clips on it to hold it. Sometimes this side, if you don't have something holding it down, it will come apart while you're trying to glue your other ends. So it's just easier if you go ahead and use something to hold it, give yourself a little bit of time for it to, for the glue to dry. It doesn't take long for art glitter, but if it pulls apart, then it's just messy. Okay, so I'm going to hold this one down and I'm going to pull this side over until those corners meet. I will burnish all of this really well with my bone folder. And I'm going to put another paper clip on this side. Now, that is just enough to hold it until we get these sides without these coming apart. I'll make sure that my tabs are on the inside and I'm going to put glue. I will glue both of mine, but I will work with one at a time. OK, 
Okay, so you want to make sure that this edge meets this edge, that it doesn't go over. And that's good. Then I lay it down and I take my bone folder. And we do the same thing with this side. We make sure our corners meet. I hold it. Make sure you hold it because as you, when you first start burnishing with your, your um, see I hold it with a finger while I burnish a little bit because otherwise it could slip and get out of line. Okay, that looks perfect. That looks great. So while you're here, you can go ahead and push this edge down. I will glue that just like we did with the top in our last video. And these are going to be put up the same day. You can make your top and bottom the same day, day two, three apart, whenever you have time. But I wanted to break them up so that you didn't feel so overwhelmed. Um, not it, I don't, I don't worry when I take, when I do videos with other people, I'm pretty good. I know how to stop and start and I don't get lost. I write things down I'm, I, and I love a lot of the women that do two hour videos. I just, I sit and I work with them, but some of my students I have found, they don't really like that. They would rather have a shorter video, have a break and come back the next day and not have to go looking for where they stopped on a long video. So I. I try to break things down a little bit more for, for my students, the people that on the internet that I've worked with. Okay, we're going to take our edge and we're going to put that as close as we can. Again, I'm going to hold it with one finger while I take my bone folder. And once I get a little bit burnished down, then I don't worry about it so much. But those initial movements of your bone folder across the paper can sometimes move it if you're not holding it. So my edges are put together. I'm going to hold it a little bit and then I can let it go. And again, we're going to push this over. So we'll glue it down, push it over. There we go. And I will burnish it. And then these will be dry enough that you can take your clips off, whether they're alligator or whether they're paper clips. Now, you want to look at your corner and you want to take just a very small triangle out of that. You can kind of see I did not take much out, just a very little bit. And that keeps it from binding and getting messy on the inside when you do push your paper in. You will have to paint. Sometimes we have some white that shows and you'll have to paint, but that's okay. And then, so the last thing we do is we just go ahead and glue all of this. I will push this over. This one's a little bit hard because you do have two layers of paper. And I burnish really well. Burnishing's a good key. And then I will put glue on this. Push it over. Burnish. And the same with these. Glue. And see you have two layers of paper because of your overlapping hair. And so you have to push that just a little bit harder to get it over there and then I burnish that a little bit more because I want to make sure that stays down. Okay, and then our last piece. Push it over, burnish really well. Now comes the test. <laughs> And if we've done it all nicely, I will paint and I will smudge later. But what I want to do is I want to take my, oh, look at that. Look at that. Yay. 
it just fits so nicely now you can paint this or you can fill it with other paper if you want to I I don't that's a lot of work for me so I just paint it and I'm going to paint it with what did I put it my antique bronze just like I did the top and then I will wait until it's good and dry I will put some Mod Podge on it to seal it and once that is really good and dry I'm going to put candy in this on my uh, bookcase I'm going to make a nice little display with all of the things that we are making in this this month's video series okay I hope you've liked this this was a lot of fun for me um, come back we're going to do a few more little things for Halloween and thank you thank you so much for joining me bye bye